this distinctive Australian sound is not from leather hitting leather. The crack is caused when the very tip of the whip breaks the sound barrier. This system picks up changes in air density or in the density of the medium that we look at. And if the air is changing its density, it works a little bit like a lens and deflects light. And that deflection, we capture. This high-speed camera should provide an extreme slow-motion glimpse of a sonic boom. Ready to go. OK. <laughs> Let's see if what we see, or what, if we see something. You almost burst my eardrums with that one. My goodness. Uh, there, OK. I feel like it's I'm a, opening a, a Christmas it's present. A, it's, <laughs> it's a very short moment. Ah, there we are. So there it comes in. There it... Ah, no, it's actually... It, it, it's done its thing outside, uh, so you have to go a little bit lower. OK, so it'll right. crack above the box. Yes. OK. Yeah. I think it cracked either above or below, but it's, it's already straightened. Harold is looking for a small white streak emanating from the tip of the whip, indicating the existence of a shockwave. This happens when the tip travels faster than the speed of sound, causing wave fronts to pile up on top of each other, producing an intense high pressure zone. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. OK, so the... Oh! Was that it? It was it, but we don't see much. The crack, or sonic boom we hear, is that abrupt change go. in pressure, Three, or shockwave, hitting our eardrums. So what we're actually trying to do at the moment is get the cracky bit, the flip around, right in the field of view of the camera. It's actually proving a little bit more difficult than we expected, because it's not about where the whip ends at the end of a of an action, it's about a crack that occurs somewhere in the process. So it's a process of elimination right now. Three, two, one, go. Yeah. All right. Oh, oh, wait, 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 I think we got it. I think we got something. Did you see that little? It went really fast yes. in one and section. You see a trace. Wait, wait, wait. There. Yeah. There's your shock. You can see it. Oh. There. That is, see, this is not there in. Ah, the look at that. Yeah. It's so like doing a it's skid. Just <laughs> now. <laughs> here. There it is. There. Ah. Yes. We got it. There is your shock wave. Hey. We can see it. Congratulations. Yes. Got it. Okay. No, that's fantastic. Nice work. Amazing. You did it. You did it. <laughs> Harold's footage reveals that by moving at nearly two and a half times faster than the speed of sound, the whip tip has created its own fleeting shockwave. Wow. Great. In fact, this is one of the things that uh, makes this job really nice because it's like an old explorer. You actually get to see something that few people have seen in reality. And sharing this then with a the whole group is even better. No, really great. I am very, very happy with this. Wow. It's been a fascinating glimpse into the transparent world of shockwaves, but the ones created by a whip are just small fry. Scale up that shockwave and it becomes a crash of thunder, the boom of fireworks, or the blast from a large-scale explosion. And at that size, shockwaves can kill. So this is like the whip crack, but supersized. But too precise, absolutely. At this explosive test site, mechanical engineer Mike Hargather is going to show me just how powerful and dangerous explosive shock waves can be. 
and what we can learn from studying them. So, when you're in the pub and someone asks you what you do for a job, how do you describe it? I, I tell them that I blow things up and, and do science with it. I, I think that's the thing people don't expect. Over the last 20 years, Mike has been researching explosives and shockwave propagation. Trigger switch coming in. Trigger switch in, yeah. And then we'll jump he not in. only tests explosives themselves and the chemicals which make them possible, but also the shock waves they produce. Today, Mike and the team are setting up a two kilogram explosive charge. High speed cameras will allow them to study the resulting shock wave in forensic detail, revealing a lot about the original explosion. Why scientifically explore explosions? There's a lot of different applications. Um, certainly defense is a major application, but things like mining and oil and gas also use actually more explosives than all defense combined. And then there's things that people have in their daily lives, things like car airbags um, or things like fireworks and that we use for celebrations. Explosives, most people don't realize it, but they're almost involved in their daily life in the background that gets us the materials and the things that we use in our daily lives. Center on the charge. All right, focus. Mike and I will be viewing the explosion from a safe distance, where the shock wave won't exert any real pressure on us and away from any fragments that might kick up from the blast. This is not my first shot. Oh, I hear it come off the mountains. In this canyon here, we can hear all of those echoes as that shock expands and then reflects off of all of the surrounding hillside. That was amazing. There was a sound, but there was also a feeling. Like I felt that through my chest, right down, you know, like the inside of my legs into the ground almost, like it, it hit me. Is that the shock wave? That's the shock. It's that thump of pressure. It's hitting you almost like a hammer hit because it's a sharp spike in pressure over a short period of time. Most of the human body handles mild to moderate levels of shock surprisingly well. But when a shock wave reaches a high enough pressure, it can disintegrate everything in its path. Let's go. <laughs> By analyzing shock waves, scientists like Mike can carefully determine the right explosion for the task. All right, so here's the two camera views. So we have the color on the left and then the grayscale on the right. You can see all that gases that was produced in that explosion process. That's all that fireball that we see afterward. So the big thing that we're after to see that shockwave is in these first couple of frames, we see the bright flash, but then right in front of all of these gases, we're gonna see a little ripple go across the background. And it's that little ripple that is the shockwave. as it comes up over the top, right as it comes through the trees, we can see that uh, ripple. Yeah, OK, I've clued onto it now. It looks like a moving mirage. Yep, so we call this a background distortion. It's the same thing that road shimmer is. On a hot day, you see a thermal plume rising off the ground, and it distorts the background. We're seeing the same thing here. It's the density change across the shockwave. <laughs> We can learn a lot about the performance of the explosive by tracking that shockwave. So by knowing its speed, that tells us how strong the shock is. 
And if we look at two different explosive materials, we can tell a relative strength between them by studying this. So it, it is sound that breaks the rules a little bit, isn't it, a shockwave? I think that's a great way to put it. it. It breaks the rules because it has that pressure associated with it. It has that thump that it delivers to you. Regular sound, we don't have that spike in pressure that causes damage, but a shockwave does. All right, this has been slightly earth shattering of an experience. Because on one hand, I'm completely exhilarated. This is supersonic. It's going faster than the speed of sound. But on the other hand, it's a terrifying sound. And I can't help but think of war zones and places where that feeling would be accompanied by terror. So really, I don't even know how to feel about this. <laughs>